of that name, every name was bow. This infirmity was nailed to the cross of Calvary. They dislocated her hand. See? They dislocated her. Is it your first time of coming here? Yes. Today is your first time of coming here? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. This shall be among the testimonies for today. Since when has this been tormenting you? Three years. Oh. You have not been able to use this hand. Three years. You woke up with this. Hallelujah. 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 There shall be deliverance. Amen. Bring a chair. Sit down here first. You are not going back with this today. Eh? They are going to walk on this. The bone shifted out. See? Wait, there is a power that will shift it back to position. Amen. That power was released on the cross of Calvary. Sit down first. Make I talk to my people. Hallelujah. I think don't finish. You go. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, Pastor, I want to be convinced today concerning the baptism. So the scripture said that there's no unclean thing shall hear the kingdom of God. Yes. And concerning the small ones, let's say, because he said until somebody repents and confess with her mouth or his mouth before she or he will be baptized. So, since no unclean thing shall hear in the kingdom of God, and you mentioned Adamic sin, and I believe that no one died with Adamic sin that shall hear in the kingdom of God. And Adamic baptism wash away the Adamic sin. And the person have not had the opportunity to confess and repent and died. What will happen? And another question I have is it because. You're talking of the child. From childhood until the age the person will confess maybe the person doesn't have and the person did not reach that age and died that is if a child dies he's supposed to have died with the Adamic sin is that your question yes. so he cannot make heaven that's what I want so to you are saying what you. happens to that yes. I just didn't want to go into it because there is a teaching and it will take some time but I can tell you this church 
there is a name that's a book I mean to say that has the name of those to be redeemed it is called the book of life and let me tell you everyone that is to be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ their names are in that book and the name is not written there the day you give your life to Christ. When is the name? When was the name written? The Bible said from the foundation of the world. Because in verse 29, remember, Jesus Christ said, Come to me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But John 6.44 says, No man can come to Christ except the father who sent him draw you now so you can never be a christian except god draws you to christ now when you god draws you that is the call now but who are those that he calls why would the father draw you and not draw another person who dies in sin verse 29 says for whom he did for no romans chapter 8 he did predestinate through foreknowledge of when you, who you are right from your mother's womb, God knows what you will be. God knows who he will reveal himself to and they will believe. And those who will not believe. And he wrote their names, those who will believe, before Adam even started, before he even started with Adam. I'm just summarizing it. And everyone whose name that is written in that book. They are the reason Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. That's why I say salvation is not for all. It is for only those whose names are written in the book of life. If that child's name is in the book of life, there is not, if you like, burn them, throw away them for toilets. You go cry the day, they will bring her out from that toilet. You don't go die. Until, and God will watch over that child until he reaches the age that you will give the child the Holy Ghost, which is eternal life, before anything can happen. So, if a child dies without receiving salvation, that's why I say the blood of Jesus Christ will take care of him. I just use it to close the matter. But the truth is, it is evidence, his name is not in the book of life. Pastor, praise yes. God. Mm -hmm. Is it a law by our Lord Jesus Christ that we should go to the river? Is it the law by to him? Do what? Because that we must go to the river. Now me, you go ask. Yes, Did I say you must go to the river? Because he said that any other baptism without that is not a normal baptism. I didn't say river. I the said the water. Baptism, I said, yes. So what I'm saying, is he a law by him? Because what I know, he said, you go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. We baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Is he a law? Because when Apostle uh, Paul goes to Colinus, is there any river? I didn't see the scripture did not mention any river. After preaching to the household there, they gave their life to Christ. They didn't mention any river or any omission that they went. So I want to be convinced today. I want to get something. Praise so, God. And another question is that in that household, is there no child? After preaching to the household, is there no child among Colinus' house that's included in that baptism? Uh, let me quickly correct you. It was not Paul that went there. It was Peter. Peter. Yes, sorry. And um, Peter is the same one in Acts chapter 2. Cornelius' house is in Acts chapter 10. Peter's, Peter made this statement in Acts chapter 2 when he finished preaching. And they were pricked in their heart on the day of Pentecost. The Jews said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized. So he who thought that, he will not baptize anybody who has not repented. Therefore, in the house of Cornelius, he certainly baptized only those who were qualified to be baptized. And whether he took them to the river or not, don't carry that big belly here. We don't finish. Okay. Praise the Lord. Listen. Listen, the word baptize, it means a mass. That is the meaning of baptism. Baptism means a mass. So you cannot sprinkle water and say, I immerse you with water. And Peter and Paul and all the apostles, they know that 
baptism is identifying with the death and burial. And they know when somebody is buried, you don't sprinkle sand on him. Say, I bury you, I bury you, I bury you. You must be covered. Therefore, it is only normal inference that they baptized them, took them to where there was enough water to cover them. Because the Bible says, and he baptized them. God bless you. What do you want to talk? Praise the Lord. Daddy, it has to do with the dry fasting. Let them hear you. It has to do with the fasting you, you told us about the dry fasting. It is not true fasting that God would deliver you. Yes. There was a place I went to. So I now saw the man of God. He said that, that he, there is one woman that vowed that I, before I will get married that I must suffer. Yes. And she now put a mark on my face that, before, that I have to go for dry fasting. Then after the fasting, I have to seal the fasting with 10,000 naira. See, so that's what I want to find out. Whether it's the right thing for someone to do. Praise the Lord. Every false preacher sitting down commercializing the gospel. Holy Ghost! So you see, say, no be pastor. I want hungry man, we're hungry the wire. <laughs> they go sit down, they, they use ignorance of Christians. They collect money from them. No genuine, look, even unbelievers, no real powerful babalao, they don't charge. Now when the thing don't work for you, you go come see them. Do you understand? And they know they even charge very well. They read babalao. They just make something, just, you know, bring offering. And even the Bible teaches that when you are coming before a prophet, you don't come empty. And So, he said, even when you come to his presence, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16 say, don't come empty. That's why offering is part of the, say, you, you come here with offering? You know, I will charge you too. Eh, you come with offering? Yes. Eh, yes. Better offering? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, church. That man, a fake. And anybody that tells you that see the problem you have and does not give you solution, now lie in the talk. No be God, tell them. Sorry to interrupt you because the person that directed me when I was coming back and I said, where are you coming from? I told her. He said that even the uh, in-law went there. Talk to the, the microphone. The in-law went there. They now asked him to sow a seed of 50,000, which he did as since then that the door has opened. So when he even told me that 10,000, because he asked me what am I doing, I told him for now that I don't have a job. So he said I should go and look for where I will get 10,000 naira. So that after the prayer on Sunday, then I have to come to him with that 10,000 naira, sow a seed. Then I will have to continue living a holy life. So that's what he told me. I have told you the Bible said freely we have received. And freely we give. Commercialization of the gospel is of the devil. No true man of God will tell you to bring money for me to pray for you. He said, Babalao. And it's even a fake Babalao. It's nothing like that. Amen. And let me tell you, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You have this Bible for you to know who is a true man of God. But some of us, you know, if those who suffer this in past, like women looking for fruit of the womb, they want to save their marriage. Anything, 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 provided I will get the child, anything, 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 anything. So they, they will go, some of them go and jam some of these demonic men of God and sleep with them. Yes, all you want, nobody picking you want, I will give you. Uh -huh. It's true. You see? And you go, you get one small problem, you go there and create more problems for yourself. Don't go there and give money. Okay, Your deliverance is not in the hand of that man, it's in the hand of God. Amen. You are not a member of this church. I've been coming for an IVG. Uh, you, okay, you are a IVG member. <laughs> no member of this church will fall prey to such. Our eyes of understanding has opened it to him. Tell him off. If they want to force you, they say, if you don't bring it, you will die. 
Ask him which day I go die. Which day? If I don't bring her by which day I go die. Then after that day, go and meet and say, I never die, you. You are false. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How can God show me your problem and not tell me solution? By which spirit did I see it? Yes? Praise the Lord, church. God bless you, pastor. So my own question is, is not really a question, but I just want to just make a request. So concerning this uh, true baptism, I want to see if you can put it in the book and write it just true baptism. So I can... I should write it in a book. Yes. How much you go make pay me make a special <laughs> book for it, sir. How much you go pay me make a writer? <laughs> you said to write in a small work. Why do you... Oh, well, it's okay. We are the writers. I have preached several times on this topic. So, uh, press. Now we go to school. Transcribe the tape. Put in book form. Give it to them. Simple. Me to write a book. Chai. I don't get time for them. Thank you, sir. People, when they write book, now not anointing, no. Got to sit down and write. Not be small thing. I'm not to write. I am to talk. My anointing are to talk. Praise the Lord. Let those who write, may they write. Uh -huh. Pastor, I'd like to discuss the scripture with you because you are not doctrinal. I am. You are not doctrinal. I am not doctrinal. Yes, because you look at the scripture the way it is. Thank you. But I want us to do a spiritual mathematics tonight. Yes, fire on. I would like you to agree with me. Is the name, the name Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit not synonymous with Jesus? Uh, that is grammar. No, no, sir. Pastor, excuse me. The no, name you... Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit appears to be synonymous with Jesus. In verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have. That is Jesus. Yes. In 19, he gave the commandment. I see an entailment doctrine entailed in section in verse 19 that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is synonymous with Jesus. That's why I say it's English grammar. When you say something is synonymous, yes. what do you mean? There's an equation. It's equivalent. The, the, the tripod combined together is equal to Jesus Christ. Is that the mathematics? That is the spiritual mathematics. It's not secular. No, no. Listen. Listen. Yes, sir. You believe in three persons in one God? No, I am looking at what uh, Christ uh, said. Uh, look away from that one first. Answer my question first. Excuse me, Pastor. No, just answer me now. Yes. No matter... What you read, your understanding is influenced. What you read is influenced by an understanding you have. That's why I first ask you, I say, do you believe in Trinity? Uh, excuse me, Pastor. Is it a difficult question to answer? No, I'll, I'll honestly, I'll answer you. No, it's either yes or no. In verse 19, Jesus was not teaching Trinity. Did I say so? He was introducing I am himself. only asking you a question. Did I say Jesus was teaching Trinity? I only am asking you now. I said, do you believe in Trinity? Uh, you are not supposed to answer for me. Because you are wasting time in answering a very simple question. Pastor, excuse me, sir. Do you believe in the doctrine of three persons in one God? Known as Trinity, yes or no? Trinity is a doctrine. I was not talking doctrine here. I want us to look at Sir. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as being synonymous with Christ. Sir, um, hallelujah. Uh, there is something a uh, lawyer say in the court. When a witness is not cooperating, 
They say my Lord is a hostile witness. Because what you are supposed to answer, you are avoiding to answer. No, sir. No, let me say something, sir. Uh, please, mind my, don't mind my language. Eh? Uh, no, no, don't worry. Yes, you are not sincere. I'm very frank. If you are frank, you will have yes. answered me frankly, yes or no. no. You are not frank. I say, do you believe in the doctrine of Trinity? It is a difficult question for you to answer it is when not. the answer is either yes or no. No, Pastor, I don't answer yes The or reason no. is because you know where I am going. That's why I say you are not sincere. God bless you. Synonymous or not synonymous, let us fire on. God bless you. Hallelujah. That's the last person. Amen. Are we happy here today? He was going to do spiritual mathematics and I wanted us to start with that mathematics. He knows where I am going and he was avoiding it. What do you want to talk? Yes? God bless you, sir. My question is, you said without baptism, many people will not go to heaven. Now that you are the one that knows the truth, and you know that many churches are baptizing wrongly, I want to know, what is your approach to it? And what are you doing about it? I am not the only one, listen, I am not the only one that know this doctrine. This doctrine first is in the Bible. But that remember that in Matthew chapter 13, there is a parable there of a woman that took leaven and mixed it with three measures of meal and corrupted the whole meal. In that parable in Matthew 13 verse 33, Jesus Christ was talking about the three works of grace that leaven is false doctrine. A woman corrupted it with false teachings and destroyed the whole process of salvation. Substituted what justification is with something else. What the baptism of the Holy Ghost is with something as the whole three works and even the process of sanctification it is a woman and that woman is the woman in Revelation chapter 17 known as a harlot and the mother of harlots and when we trace it down it is the Roman Catholic Church but God hallelujah promised that Elijah shall come and restore all things. And Elijah came through the ministry of William Abraham with the Elijah anointing. And so what I am preaching has been going on since 1933. And all the leader of every denomination, they have had that teaching. They know the ministry of William Abraham. But they turn it down because in accepting it, you will have to destroy the structures on ground. And so, don't think that they don't know it. They know it. And don't think that I am the only one preaching it. It's everywhere. I was watching the leader of Redeemed Church on the television and just during the week. And he was telling them blessing a group of people on air and he was saying that the three nitty will come and bless you. God the Father will bless you they say amen. God the Son will bless you they say amen. God the Holy Ghost will bless you they say amen. And even read the Bible very well there is nothing like God the Son in the Bible. And I heard that same man again calling making altar call and I heard him telling Father write their name in the book of life. And that is a doctorate degree holder. That is a mathematician that is supposed to be a man that is analytical. He can analyze. He's a, a dawn of mathematics. 
teaching not in primary school, secondary school, but in the university. Therefore, he knows and he reads and he knows that the Bible said the book of life was written before the foundation of the world. So why will he tell God now write their name in the book of life? Now, and now, now, a man like Mbadiniju last year, former governor of Anambra State, he read something that Adeboye wrote and the team paid him and he decided to take two full pages of the, I think, Sun newspaper of Punch and replied Adeboye concerning the doctrine of the Godhead and told him clearly that there is nothing like trip nitty in the Bible and pointed out there that the name of our God is Jesus and mentioned that baptism is done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he read it he must have seen it and he would not say but he turned it down the reason is simple unto you it is a given to know the mystery of the kingdom but unto them who are without Mark chapter 4 says so hallelujah it is spoken in parables let me tell you something you look at them and think they are mighty men of God but what is mighty before you may not be mighty before God let me just tell you the size of the congregation does not determine approval from God I am telling you what determines approval from God is that what you are teaching we bring it to the Bible the Urim and Tumim and it flashes if it does not flash, it is wrong. They have had it. And I am on television every day. Satellite television. And we say what I am saying. Every Monday, we dedicate it to just tell the whole world. Baptism is in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we have thousands all over the world that watch us. Both on the internet that submit. Go wherever they are to rebaptize. And they write us, they call us, and they praise us, and they are praying for us for opening their eyes to understand a simple doctrine in the Bible. Yet, William Abraham said, the error has gone so far that it will take the Holy Ghost to open your eye to even see water baptism. So they know. They know. They know. Hallelujah. Church, clap your hands for Jesus. Stand up. Pick your hymn books. Hymn number 100. Then Jesus came. The tempter's power is broken. Then Jesus came. The tempter's power, when he comes, is broken. Let's worship our God. Let's go, everybody. Was at a road beside the highway bank. His eyes were blind. His eyes were blind. That's somebody's condition here today. He could not see. He crossed his rest. He crossed his rest. And she buried the shadow. Then Jesus came. Then Jesus came. When Jesus comes, the tempter's fire is broken. When Jesus, when comes, Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. He takes the blue. He takes the blue. Jesus comes to save from all my friends. 
somebody's life here. Yeah. I say today, today, today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't be weary in your prayer life. If you come here, you no answer today, come tomorrow. He will answer. Come again. Keep coming. Keep coming. He answers prayer. He has his appointed time. Today is somebody's appointed time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pick your envelopes for your offerings. 